Hi, we're Steve and Bill McGrew from Emerson, Iowa, the southwest corner of Iowa, and we farm 100% uh, no-till corn and soybeans. And uh, we were looking at ways to change our liquid nitrogen bar because of the cost difference, and we want to go to anhydrous, but like Brother Bill is always concerned about the lack of residue. Years ago when we started the no-till, we quit the anhydrous ammonia because of the soil disturbance and the residue loss and that, and we went to liquid, and like Steve says, now the prices, you know, almost dictates that you try to use ammonia again now anyway. And so we were looking at a way to do anhydrous ammonia again so we could live with the uh, no-till ground anyway. And, uh, like I say, of course, we looked at the John Deere ones, and, you know, they did better than the conventional bars. And, and then we saw some YouTube videos and people saying, you got to see this blue thing work. It's just amazing anyway. And, and you know, we went to a demonstration once and thought, boy, this is incredible. But, you know, then we started looking around and that. And so I thought maybe, oh, it's got too many parts. But, you know, not really either anyway. And we can talk about that later. But, uh, Anyway, we tried one this spring for the first time, and we ran it over a few thousand acres, and just was quite pleased with it. It just it runs so smooth and quiet, and, and really doesn't pull as hard as what we were led to believe it might. Anyway, I mean, we we could pull it six and a half mile an hour, eight mile an hour. It didn't seem to matter. But uh, anyway, we just really like it. Anyway, you know, we talked about the other res low disturbance bars out there, and they're good too, but. This is just a whole other plateau. It's just up there. You're just literally talking a quarter of an inch. You see a corn stalk cut in half that's separate a half an inch. And we had some wheat and triticale cover crops. We went in there, and the anhydrous didn't even come up and burn them when they were live in there. And then they kept going. And, and it's just really uh, impressive the way this doesn't disturb the soil. You drive by on the road, and you would never believe it had been anhydrous. It's, it's just another plateau. It's, it's for people that would have a real interest in low disturbance, no-till. If um, you're concerned about the erosion of some other methods, uh, this is just in a class by itself. It's a, a premium bar. So you did run in some cover crop then this spring, and uh, so you're able to get anhydrous down without adversely affecting the integrity of, of the cover crop plants and, and, and didn't impact their purpose. It did. We. Uh, ran this bar at the shallowest depth of four inches. We wanted to try that, and that was good enough. And, and because you're holding down the soil, that anhydrous didn't even come up. And so you could go out there and look at the wheat or the triticale or the rapeseed plants, and, and it hadn't burned the roots much at all. And uh, other bars, you know, you might lose a three inch swath, and that's okay every 30 inches, but, but this doesn't do that. It's, it's just really amazing. Anybody that would look at it in the field running is just amazed at how low disturbance it is. And you're in southwest Iowa, so you have a fair amount of rolling terrain, and you said you're looking for a solution to help eliminate erosion, and, and you demoed a bar over a few thousand acres this spring. You've had some, there's been some significant rainfalls at times, I think, in southwest Iowa. I guess, what have you seen um, as, as far as uh, erosion or lack of? To be honest, you can't even tell where this you know, after a, a quarter inch of rain, you can't even tell where this rig is run, let alone cause any erosion in that. I mean, yeah, we had plenty of rain like a lot of people had, and, but any erosion, I guarantee you, was caused by the planter and, and other things, not not by this anyway. The wave, the wavy colder on the planter, you would expect some tillage, and it did that. And so this is just a fraction of the mark that the planter had. So yes, we had some erosion on the end rows with the wavy colder on the planter, but this is just, you're literally talking a quarter of an inch disturbance and holding down the residue, and, and it's, um, it's really impressive. You had some interest from the local NRCS office, um, came out and saw you. They were quite impressed with it. They said they'd never seen it. They go, we should be standing behind this product. They say they haven't seen anything. Because for a while they would try and bend, saying, well, we won't call anhydrocene a tillage tool, so we'll accept some of that. And that was okay in the day, but, but now we do have something that doesn't even do that. So for erosion and residue disturbance and consistency of depth, this really did well. We were pleased. And so we ended up buying. 
And so a serious no-till, as you say, this is this is this is a piece of equipment that truly, truly would be a no-till piece of equipment, or as close to true no-till. I don't think there's anything that compares to it. It's in, it's in a class by itself. What would you say if, if there was one thing that you were, the, I guess, the most pleased with or the most impressed with, with what you saw running this spring, what, what would that be? The lack of soil and residue disturbance. Just the total lack of it. Those uh, rubber tracks holding it down and going over it, it's, 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 it's really pleasing to see. You go out in the field and everybody that's looked at it, old neighbor, neighbors would stop a lot and look at it. And, just unbelievable that's a anhydrous bar. It's just so smooth and quiet. I mean, you know, the old bars used to pitch and squeak and groan and all that, and this just glides back there. There's just hardly a sound out of it. And you go through a mild ditch or a terrace channel, and each one walks individually. It's just, it's just incredible to watch. Did you notice any differences uh, planned this spring? In the in the in the bed you were going over versus with a more conventional application. Like I said earlier, really, that's when we quit anhydrous ammonia years ago. It was, it was hard to plant, and your, your depth control was lost. And uh, this, you just like I say, you couldn't even tell it'd been done anyway. We've talked before. If you were hiring this done, you know I would pay significantly more per acre to have this machine do the field than another bar because it's just uh, it's just so little disturbance. And an early concern you mentioned was moving parts and, and maybe the maintenance that you may have to incur. What what do you experience from that perspective? We we did what, a couple thousand acres with it and I mean not bearing one, not belt one, maybe we didn't put a we didn't put a dime in parts into it. That was a used machine. Yeah, and that was a used machine. But you can just tell until you actually see and hear it run, it's just so smooth and quiet. You can tell nothing's going to wear much, you know. And of course it will down the road. But, uh, compared to some of the competitors that just take a steady diet, you know, for so much an acre, I this doesn't appear to be like that anyway. You know, the normal standard bearings and that and then the rubber tracks have quite a long life to them and, and I would expect the per acre cost per year to be quite low. How about daily maintenance? What do you experience? Just grease the pivot points on it and uh, one one rainy day we tighten the belts you know a notch or something but uh, very, very low maintenance. Uh, didn't break a single bolt. Uh, it's just incredible.